The NFL's bicentennial season of 76 began with high hopes for the Atlanta Falcons and their fans. In 75, rookie Steve Bartkowski returned from an injury to lead a late season resurgence. But in 76, when all the dust had cleared, there remained only disappointment, frustration, and pain. They say the first 10 years are the toughest, but Falcon season number 11 was about as tough as they come. While their opponents celebrated game-winning touchdowns, the Falcons were plagued all season long by touchdowns called back because of penalties. By the little things that add up to the big things. By the ones that just barely managed to slip away. At times, even team strengths seem to become weaknesses. NFL football is almost as unpredictable as the bounce of the ball itself. But for the Falcons, one truth became more and more evident during the 76 season. And that one truth was that there were going to be some big changes made in Atlanta for the management, for the players, and for the long-suffering fans of the Falcons. The tremendous expansion of pro football began back in 1960 when the Dallas Cowboys chose as their first quarterback five foot nine inch Eddie LeBaron, the wonderful wizard of Washington. Eddie LeBaron was once the NFL's leading passer when he quarterbacked the Redskins. But now, as general manager of the Atlanta Falcons, LeBaron has moved into the even more demanding pressures of the front office, where the future of a franchise will depend on his decisions, such as his selection of a new head coach. Good leadership is important in every type of endeavor. It's extremely important to be a great leader when you're the coach of a professional football team. You have to meld a diverse group of people together, build that winning spirit. We believe we have that type of person in Lehman Bennett. He came from a winner, and we believe he is a winner. Hi. As we look at this highlight film, I plan to bring out some of my philosophy as to how I think we can turn the Atlanta Falcons into a winning, contending football team. First, I think it all begins with the running game. And I feel like here, with the talent we have in the running back position, and with our new philosophy and techniques in teaching, option blocking and option running, we should be able to move the football with consistency on the ground. The foundation of the running game is the offensive line, which will be bolstered by the return from injury of all pro center Jeff Van Note. Other veterans of the trenches will include Len Gottschalk, Brent Adams, Greg Kendall, Paul Rysak, and Phil McKinley. These men will use Coach Bennett's new techniques to open holes for young backs like Billy Pritchett and number 48, Woody Thompson.
At six feet and 210 pounds, Haskell's stand back every year has been called too small to play the full back position. Now, for the fourth straight season, stand back will be out to prove that he belongs in the NFL. There were also three rookie runners who made an impression in 76. The Green Bay Packers will remember Mike Esposito, number 26. Dallas will also remember Mike Esposito, who scored the touchdown which finished the Cowboys in one of the season's biggest upsets. Atlanta's top two draft picks in 76 were running backs. Alfred Eugene Collins Jr., better known as Sonny, was the Falcon's second round selection from Kentucky. And he showed flashes of the kind of explosiveness every offensive coach dreams about. The Falcons' first round choice was number 44, Ernest Ray Bean, better known as Bubba. And he was a marked man from game one of his pro career. Game one also happened to be the first time he showed why he was a marked man. Bean then showed that he could work the old halfback option as his only pass attempt of the season found wide receiver John Gilliam for a picture touchdown. But Bubba Bean's main job is to run with the football and he has the kind of speed and instinct which earned him almost 3,000 yards in his three seasons at Texas A&M. With some added help up front, the talent will be there for Coach Bennett's all-important running game. Our passing game will be one that is controlled and will take advantage of what the defense gives us. It is my belief that we must be able to force the defense to defend the entire width and length of the football field. We will be able to do this with our screen passes, our short passing game, the medium, and the deep passes. As the former coach of the potent Los Angeles Rams passing game, Coach Bennett knows the value of good receivers and a tight end like number 86 Jim Mitchell, who can block as well as catch. It was, in fact, Mitchell's block which led to the only touchdown in the victory over the Chicago Bears in 1976. Of course, Jim Mitchell's contributions also include his ability to catch the ball in traffic, a must for any good tight end. And Mitchell is one of the best. For the past two seasons, Atlanta's big play receiver has been number 84, Alfred Jenkins. In 76, Jenkins led the Falcons in receptions with 41, in yardage with 700, and in touchdowns with six. Against the Philadelphia Eagles, Steve Bartkowski found Jenkins for three touchdowns in the same game, but two of those touchdowns were never put on the scoreboard because they had been canceled by that old nemesis, the holding penalty. In his two abbreviated seasons in Atlanta, Steve Bartkowski has shown the ability to become a winning NFL quarterback. But to date, 
Bartkowski has been forced to play the role of the prematurely shell-shocked war veteran. It seems that every NFL opponent in turn declares open season on Steve Bartkowski. And for number 10, the game in recent years has become an uphill battle for survival. As a rookie, Steve Bartkowski was able to play in 11 games, but in 76, he played less than five. For in New Orleans in the season's fifth week, Bartkowski took the shot on the knee, which ended his season. Unfortunately, Bartkowski's true value cannot be realized until he has the luxury of a full and healthy season with an equally healthy offensive team. Number 11, Kim McQuilkin, replaced Steve Bartkowski as the starting quarterback in the season's sixth week against Cleveland. McQuilkin nearly led the Falcons to an upset over the Browns, but Cleveland managed to hold on in a 20 to 17 squeaker. Then it was newly acquired Scott Hunter's turn to start at the all-important quarterback position. Like the other Atlanta passes, Hunter took his share of lumps from the opposition's pass rush. But he did come up with three victories and several others which might have been. In the rematch with the Saints in Atlanta, Hunter brought the Falcons back from a disastrous start and led Atlanta to a rousing come-from-behind victory over New Orleans. Scott Hunter's best game was against the 49ers in Atlanta as Alfred Jenkins scored twice and the Falcons came away with a hard-earned 21 to 16 victory over the men of the San Francisco Gold Rush. As sweet as these wins were to the victory-starved Falcons and to quarterback Scott Hunter, the man Coach Bennett is counting on for the future is Steve Bartkowski, and he will be back stronger than ever. Since special teams are approximately one-fifth of the entire ball game, it is my belief that special teams should win two games for us a year and not lose any. We must be more aggressive, we must be smarter, and we must be in better condition than our opponents if we expect our special teams to perform as they must. In recent seasons, the Atlanta Falcon return teams have featured the exploits of the former free agent from Tabor, number 22, Rollin Lawrence. In 1976, Lawrence returned 21 kickoffs plus an NFL record 54 punts. Special teams are more than just returning kicks. The strong right leg of place kicker Nick Mickemeyer again led the Falcons in scoring in 76, while Mickemeyer's holder, number six, John James, 
also led the conference in punting. And the Falcon special teams led the entire NFL in punting efficiency. The defense, the part of the game that wins for you. Our overall philosophy on defense will be one that we must first stop the running game. By stopping the running game, we feel that we will make our opponents throw the ball more, which gives us a chance for the big play, the interception or the sack. The Falcons have a solid nucleus of defenders who can make the big play. A strong set of defensive backs, along with a good mix of veterans and youth among the linemen and linebackers. And as Coach Bennett says, these are the men who win for you. Sometimes just the threat of defensive pressure can cause the opposition to break down. In Chicago, the Falcons applied defensive pressure all over the field and as a result were rewarded with victory as well as a shutout of the revitalized Bears. <music> defensive pressure yields turnovers and the Falcons have the backs who can come up with the ball like number 32, free safety Ray Easterly. strong safety, the Falcons are blessed with one of the game's headiest players in Ray Brown, number 34. At the critical cornerback position, Atlanta has a matched set of tough young hitters in four-year veteran Roland Lawrence and the scouting find of 76, the Falcons' eighth-round draft choice from Washington, Frank Reed, number 28. Frank Reed is one of those rare young players who just naturally seems to make the right moves around the man with the ball. On the other corner, the Falcons got another season's worth of big plays from number 22, Rollin Lawrence. Lawrence is not big, but he plays the game the way most coaches wish their big men would play it. In 75, Lawrence had nine interceptions. In 76, they didn't throw to his area as much but he still came up with six interceptions, some of them truly spectacular Rollin Lawrence productions. The Falcon linebackers were beset by injuries in 76. At the start of the season, one flank was patrolled by the reliable nine-year veteran, Greg Brezina, number 50, who can still stand the best NFL ball carriers on their collective ear. On the other flank was number 54, the wild-eyed second-year man they called Captain Crazy. His real name is Fulton Kuykendall, and like the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, he always gets his man.
When Brezina and Kuykendall were knocked out by injuries, they were ably replaced by number 55, Ralph Ortega on one side, and on the other side by a surprising rookie free agent from East Central University, number 52, Dewey McLean. In the victory over Dallas, Dewey McLean had one of the key interceptions, while the clinching interception was grabbed off by the middle linebacker, Tommy Novus, the last of the original Falcons. Number 60, Tommy Novus, the 11-year veteran who always played the game with the spirit and enthusiasm of his All-America years at Texas and who always hit like the rookie of the year he once was. No matter what the future holds, there's only one way that Atlanta fans will want to remember Tommy Novus, and that is the way they will remember him, on top. On the front line of the defense, the Falcons welcomed back all-pro Claude Humphrey, who joined his former replacement, young Jeff Miro, at defensive end. At the defensive tackle positions were six-year veteran Mike Lewis, along with 10-year man Mike Tillerman, number 74. Defensive reinforcement was added in 76 when the Falcons acquired seven-year veteran Jim Bailey, number 72. These then are the men Coach Bennett will be counting on to pressure the offense and thereby create the opportunity for the big play. The interception or the sack. The interceptions will be spread around while the sacks usually come primarily from the defensive ends like number 75, Jeff Merrow. But the man the Falcons count on the most for the big play is number 87, Claude Humphrey. Sidelined by knee surgery for the entire 75 season, Humphrey returned better than ever in 76. He sacked the quarterback 18 times eclipsing by two his best previous season and was named Falcon of the Year by his teammates. With the addition of two number one draft choices for the 77 season, the youngest head coach in the NFL, Lehman Bennett, will be striving to turn the Falcons in the right direction by building a firm foundation for the future. In conclusion, we're going to have a consistent football team here rather than a team of peaks and valleys. We have made many changes for the players and the fans, and I am looking forward to you becoming part of us as we grow into a contending, winning football team.